Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Travis Lands. I'm one of the WordPress KC organizers. And tonight we're going to discuss getting started with MailPoet to send email newsletters on your WordPress website. Um, I don't have a formal slideshow presentation for you. I know you're probably sad about that. Um, I have I have dropped some links in the the Zoom chat, and if you're re-watching this on YouTube, they'll be in the description below the video. Uh, that covers a lot of what we're gonna talk about tonight. Um, it's also got some, some links on where if you wanna go from the MailPoet free version to a premium version. Right now, if you've never heard of AppSumo, it's a fantastic website where you can buy premium software as a service uh, software for a lifetime deal for a one one time purchase, and right now they have um, MailPoet on AppSumo, five thousand subscribers per website for unlimited number of websites, unlimited emails you're going to send each month. So, if you are a small agency, definitely go get that for forty nine dollars. A lot of small websites are never going to hit that amount, but it's a great upsell. Um, as, as well, I dropped a link in there um, to where if you decide to get a really big plan, you can get a 30% discount as well. Um, MailPoet is one of the most, was, I am not gonna say is, I can't quote that right now, but it used to be one of the most popular email newsletter platforms on WordPress. However, a few years ago, it had a, um, had the misfortune of also being one of the largest security exploits um, that WordPress has had. And so its user base went way down for a while. Uh, they retooled the entire thing, brought it back um, very strong, and they are actually doing some really cool stuff and integrating with some really cool uh, other plugins for WordPress right now too. So uh, that's one of the reasons that they're on AppSumo is I usually software go on there when they're trying to raise raise funding without selling and giving away equity. So um, like I said, go check that out on AppSumo. Um, but so they've started integrating with things like WooCommerce. Uh, so you can send, uh, so you can modify your WooCommerce, uh, your Woo WooCommerce default emails, as well as your WordPress welcome emails uh, and all of those straight through MailPoet. So it's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna grab my screen here and make sure I grab the right one. I think it's this one. All right. All right, you all see a bunch of ice cream, right? Yes. Perfect, all right. So um, let's go back here. Uh, my name is Travis Flans again. My company is Search Center Digital Marketing. Uh, we specialize in search engine optimization. And I'd say about 95% of the projects that we work on are built on WordPress. Uh, quite funny enough, I guess, I've been working on a lot of Squarespace lately. And yeah, it's a good place to start. I always tell my friends who are like, Travis, will you build me a website? And I'm like, uh, Here's what it's gonna cost to start. And they're like, uh, that's too much. And I say, well, go just start one on Wix, Weebly or Squarespace, and then let me know once you start making money and I'll build you a real one. Uh, <laughs> so not to diss Squarespace, but I've been taking on some Squarespace clients to, to be more well-rounded, right? Um, all right, so MailPoet. Their website's mailpoet.com. If you wanna check out all their details, again, I've dropped some links in the chat uh, so you can get a discount if you wanna sign up there. And I threw together this, this website actually this afternoon. We're not really gonna use this website a ton as a demo, but um, uh, this is actually built with the plugin Cubely, which is a Gutenberg blocks plugin from our friends at Themium. If you attended our, our um, Gutenberg presentation a few months ago, they gave everybody one year free of their premium Cubely. And this whole, layout package is something that comes with their premium. But anyway, I just threw this together and then I replaced their subscribe model module down here with, with a MailPoet module. So we're not really gonna use this website for a lot. I'm not going to click into the functions and subscribe and all of that. But 
um, with a little CSS, you can make the default module fit anything. So let's talk about MailPoet and let's talk about the importance of sending email newsletters. Um, so I guess uh, that's not really a conversation type thing, but a lot of, I've noticed lately a lot of smaller businesses have kind of tried to move away from sending email newsletters. Um, and I'm not really sure why. A lot of the small clients that I, whenever I take on a smaller client, um, they, they always tell me that email is dead. Does anybody else believe that email is dead? It's not dead. It is, it is the highest converting uh, outbound marketing you can do uh, because if people gave you their email newsletter, email to get on your newsletter, that means that you're creating content and putting out information that they want. Um, I'm not gonna go through the stats. You can Google and find all the big company stats on the conversion rates on email for people who actually sign up for your email list. Of course, don't just go purchase an email list or um, find emails and put them on your list. Always ask, make sure people want to be on your list first. But MailPoet makes it super simple and they've got some true power behind their platform. And I'm just gonna click into the back end of the website real quick. And, and MailPoet, um, it's, it's great because even on the free tier, so on, on the, their free level plan, and I'm not gonna click back to their website real quick and take a look at their pricing model. Um, on their free plan, they give you a thousand subscribers. And this is a thousand subscribers and you can send email through their mail server to a thousand subscribers on your list with unlimited emails. Just the only limit is a thousand subscribers. Um, so if you don't have any sort of email newsletter on your website, get this one. It's free and they're going to send, they're going to um, manage, help manage the list. Any inactive email um, subscribers, they automatically clean it up. Let me see if it says it right here in the features. Uh, uh, they'll automatically clean up any inactive subscribers and you can set that at three months, six months. Um, and I think there's another setting, we'll go through it. Also, um, they automatically will have the double opt-in in there for you. And any bounce emails, they automatically clean up the bounces for you. So if you're sending emails to people who actually receive those emails in their email inbox, that's going to give your website a higher quality reputation. If uh, people are just signing up because they can sign up and get a free coupon or a free download, but they never have to confirm their email address, then you're gonna get a lot of emails that aren't valid. Or if you don't put in the double opt-in on your email forms, you're gonna get a lot of invalid emails. Uh, so this is kind of a running debate uh, should you use double opt-in? Should you not? If somebody already tells you that they want their, they want your emails, should you make them go prove that they want your emails again? Um, that's for you to decide. Also, um, we're going to set up, go as we're going through here, um, MailPoet can actually send emails from your, from your domain email address using their server and all it takes is setting up an SPF record in your DNS. Um, we're not really gonna get into that too much because it's pretty in depth. Uh, well, it's pretty in depth for newbies, so I'm not gonna get in that too much, um, but it, they've got very easy to follow instructions. Um, I can't see any questions you know, in this view, so maybe I should just go in there and be like, all right, whatever. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go back to my demo website and here we have just a very, the most simple way for somebody to sign up on your, on your website. Just a form that says, give me all of your stuff. Give me all your email newsletters. And again, um, I guess I should specify that we're not going to talk about marketing automation emails in, in tonight. Um, uh, we are going to talk about a little bit of drip. Uh, I don't have tons of drip campaigns set up, but we'll talk about how they work and show you how they work. Um, but it's not gonna be the full marketing automation that's gonna start sending emails after somebody has visited page A and page C, but not page B, okay? MailPoet's a little more simple than that. It's more in the traditional sense of email newsletters. Um, but 
they are getting into the transactional emails as well with WooCommerce and new uh, members on your website or new users, sorry. I always forget different platforms and what they're called and all that kind of stuff. All right, uh, so uh, inside the dashboard, uh, MailPoet, if you've got the premium version, there's actually two things you have to install. I'm gonna go into my installed plugins. Um, so there's the base MailPoet plugin, um, MailPoet 3. So this is where they re, um, reinvented the entire plugin. Uh, so when you search through the repository, there'll be uh, MailPoet 2 and MailPoet 3. You definitely want MailPoet 3. Um, and then if you're on the premium, that's where you'll download that through through your account on their on their website, and you'll download it and install it. Um, so so you have to have the base free plugin and then add on the premium plugin that you download through the MailPoet website. Uh, also, here's a really valuable plugin that I use for all of my clients' websites um, because email deliverability is always one of the biggest issues. Um, and quite honestly, it seems like to be a bigger issue on smaller websites than larger websites. Um, you know, how many, how many of you have a website? I can't see you all raising your hands or anything. Well, I guess I probably am actually seeing all the videos right here. Um, but like how, how many of you, uh, is everybody here a professional? Who's a professional? Raise your hand. Kind of, and Jeff, Jeff D is like, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. All right, so, um, so a lot of, a lot of uh, DIYers, you know, who get started with email newsletters or get started with a website, a simple website, they get a cheap web host that they're on the same server with dozens or hundreds or even thousands of other websites. Half of those websites are using the cheap, cheap web hosting or sending out spam emails or they're getting hacked and then somebody else is sending out spam emails on their behalf. So email deliverability becomes a huge, huge issue. And even my smallest clients, I don't ever set them up that way, but I use this plugin uh, actually by MailPoet called WP Mail Logging. And what's fantastic about this plugin is it literally puts a log of all the emails that your website has sent. Uh, now this I, demo website I just set up today, so it doesn't have any here, but every time the function triggers on your website to send an email, it will let you know if it was sent here. So basically, if you are sending email through uh, MailPoet, it'll let you know when mails are sent. If you're sending emails just through the, um, the PHP mail function, it'll let you know if an email is sent. So it's kind of, I use it as a debugging tool, uh, but also it's just very nice whenever clients are like, I'm not receiving my emails. No, my website's not sending any emails. I haven't had any contacts in 10 days. And then I can go say, hey, I can tell that your website is sending the email. Did you by chance get a spam email from your own website and then tell your email client that your own website is sending spam? Mm, that's not so good. That's, if you get nothing else away, take away from this, not even MailPoet related, never mark an email that comes from your own website as spam, okay? Because you're telling your email client that your website is sending spam. Somebody who submits spam through a contact form is much different than a domain name sending spam. Just keep that in mind. We can have that conversation more in depth later if anybody wants to. All right, so, uh, MailPoet. MailPoet, I'm just gonna go straight to the settings and we'll start with, start with the basics. Um, allows you to set up your default from and reply to. Um, and again, you can add your own email address from your website or you can actually, we'll get, I'll just skip ahead here for a second. Um, on the send with screen, you can actually send the email here on other through your own third party email server um, or email service email service provider, um, or you can actually send it through the PHP function in WordPress, which I do not recommend at all, ever. Um, your email sending needs to be separate from your website. Um, so once you, once you set this up, and again, MailPoet will let you use their server for free. Uh, for up to a thousand 
thousand subscribers, and I highly recommend setting it up. Uh, it's very simple. It right here um, before you activate it, it'll say enter your code or activate it, and it'll pop you over to the Mail Poet um, panel, and it'll show you your authorized email addresses. And then you just enter an email address. They'll send you a verification email to verify that you own. It has to be a, an email at your domain name, of course. So it'll send you an email to verify that you have access to that email uh, and you can send email from it. And then you'll put your SPF record into your DNS, um, which they walk you through whenever you get there. So don't, it's, it's not too difficult if you've never met, Mel, if you've never dealt with DNS, it's not too difficult. Um, all right, so let's go back into the, to the basics. Uh, I always like to select subscribe and comments. So if you, um, if you blog regularly on your website and you allow people to leave comments, they can literally just click a checkbox right there and subscribe to your newsletter whenever uh, they leave a comment and you can create as many lists as you want. Um, so I just called my test list sweet subscription because it will be sweet. Um, if you allow people to register on your website, you can allow them to uh, subscribe whenever they register. But as well, there's automatically a list created for your WordPress users. So um, personally, I don't ever let people register on my websites by default. So I'm just gonna uncheck that one. Um, and then you, when, whenever you send your emails, um, you to be compliant as compliant as possible you have to give the you have to give uh recipients the option to be able to unsubscribe from your from your newsletter whenever whenever they're in that email through a link um, i'm a big proponent of making if you use the managed subscription i should take that let me start over on that i'm a big proponent of making the unsubscribe page a managed subscription page right so um, rather than saying, hey, do you wanna just one click unsubscribe from my newsletter? Let them see that there are other options. Um, so if you have multiple different types of lists, for example, um, some, some email service, some newsletter um, systems will allow them to pause their subscription for a month or two months or whatever it may be. Um, but here I'll just show you, I just created a managed subscription page. And as you can see, I, I took managed subscription and unsubscribe and made them the same page because, because right here, they just enter, it already pre-fills with their, whenever they click on the unsubscribe in an email, it will automatically, you know, pull in their email address, their first name, last name, and then it'll show whatever lists are here. You can actually manage that back in the settings. You can say, hey, I only wanna show certain lists, or again, leave it blank to show all the lists that they can subscribe or unsubscribe to. Um, one thing I like to mention on this, back years ago, I used to run a pretty successful uh, Royals blog, and I actually had um, writers that were located in the cities of the, the Royals minor league affiliate teams, and they actually had press credentials at the minor league stadiums. Uh, I wrote a lot about the Royals and I could not get press credentials for the Royals, but I was able to get uh, press credentials for five other writers in other smaller cities because the more people write about those teams, the more they want it. So, so on, on that website, my managed subscription page, it would have, it would have the check marks so they could subscribe or unsubscribe to each individual level of the Royals minor league system and major league system and just major league baseball as a whole. So that's a way that if you have multiple lists <clears throat> that you can manage that and it's really valuable. And again, like I said, I send the unsubscribe page there as well because um, they can unsubscribe from all of those lists right there. Um, and I'm a big, big believer, give somebody an option to do A or B and they're most likely gonna, they're most likely gonna choose the one that uh, hurts you the less, I don't know. Uh, a or B is better than yes or no, in my opinion. All right, um, if you wanna get stats emailed to you, you can get, a, you can get uh, all your stats notifications. You can deliver that to a different email address that's not even on your, on your website. <clears throat> you, can get, you can get a notification every time somebody signs up. 
at first, that sounds great, right? But once you get up to like 50,000 subscribers and you're getting, uh, you know, a few dozen or hundred subscribing and unsubscribing every single day, uh, you may not want to continue to get all of those emails. Uh, if you want to, uh, to create a page that shows your, all of your past newsletters, uh, just grab this short code. You can drop it into that page and you can, yeah, I don't know if you like that metric and you like to show off how many subscribers you have, you have that option here too. Uh, so here are the basic settings page. Um, I already created my own list. It automatically creates my first list and I just kind of renamed it here. Um, but let's go talk, take a look at the list and the forms since we've looked through the basic, the basic setups. So the first thing you're probably gonna wanna do is I would say create a list before a form. So maybe we should have went lists and then forms. Um, but this list, I just called it sweet subscription and this is description is just for you. So these are people who signed up through my website homepage or, you know, if you put it, put it on different pages, whatever description you want to use there. Um, so the list creation is very simple there. Uh, and then we go into the forms and inside the forms, I may have to move this box around a little bit. Okay. Let's see. Um, so this first form I just called sweet stuff. That's the very, that's the form that we see here. That's just this one right here. And in the form setting, and it's, it, we're working with the Gutenberg blocks here. Um, you can, you can also create the, create the form without Gutenberg. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so it's just going to be the title, title your title of your form, just like it would be the title of your page. Uh, Enter your, over here on the, make sure you're selecting blocks, whatever you want the label to be. You can have it outside of, of the um, input or inside the input. Styles, it gives you a little bit of styling. The styling honestly is not as great as I would like it to be um, because you're, you've got background colors, like background colors and such. Uh, it doesn't really have a lot of control for the button. I, I styled the button via CSS. Um, so it doesn't have a lot of styling for the button, but you can also add as many fields as you'd like here just by hitting the plus. Um, and you can actually add dividers, columns, all that kind of stuff in here as well. So you can, you can make the forms pretty fancy if you like. Um, first name, last name, you can actually put in whatever, let them choose what list they want to sign up if you have multiple to sign for them to choose from. And you can create custom fields as well. Um, so again, this one is just super simple to start with. But what's really great is form placement. For this is something that is just I really love from again a thousand free subscribers is that the form placement you have so many options. It can automatically be put into your content below the pages. You got some controls here as well. All pages or all posts or both. Um, a fixed bar, so you can just drop that in at the top or the bottom of all of your pages and you can have it come in on a delay so it doesn't have to show up right away. So it gets that little bit of motion to draw the attention. I mean, I don't know how you could, you would even be able to see that on a, on a website like this though, but. <laughs> um, so that way it adds a little of attention uh, to draw the eye. And it's, this is what's freaking awesome to me is it's got a pop-up. Boom. Uh, it doesn't have the exit intent pop-up, unfortunately. So uh, it doesn't have the option to, to show up after the user takes their mouse and moves it out of, out of the website. That's the only thing that I think it's missing here. That's the type of pop-ups I use are the exit intents. So I'm not interrupting somebody when they're leaving. That's when I say, hey, do you want this thing? Um, and then, of course, uh, it, it, there is a Gutenberg block. And then there's also a short code. So you can put it anywhere you want on your entire website um, with one of those. Widget areas, and you can even use PHPs and iframes. So they give you plenty of different ways to insert it into your website, no matter how you like to build your website. Um, and here you can actually just see the CSS. It's directly here for this form. Um, a lot of this is already in there. Um, and actually my custom CSS, I dropped into the WordPress customizer, not here. Um, because I don't like to have to go hunt down where I put a piece of snippet of code. So I either put it in the WordPress customizer or if it's a child theme in the style style.css file. So, all right. Um, but that's a, a, 
I mean, if your mind isn't blown just for a thousand subscribers so far for free, I don't. I was very excited when I saw this thing come on AppSumo because I'm like, you know what? This is a perfect time for me to check it out. I heard it's gotten, it's it's on a comeback and I've been very impressed since playing around with it with a handful of, cli for a handful of clients recently. <clears throat> uh, and that's why I wanted to, to do this presentation because I, I think it deserves a little more recognition. All right, so we've talked about forms, we've talked about lists. Um, let's go back into, let's go back into settings real quick. And uh, there we go. We went through all of this. Yes. Uh, sign up confirmations. Um, so if you're sending it, if you're sending your emails through the MailPoet sending service, they require double opt-in. That's to make sure that their uh, email service provider, the emails, the server that they're sending from uh, stays high quality. Uh, because double opt-in, that bots aren't going to double opt in on that. They're not going to fill out the form. The bots aren't going to fill out the form, click the button, then go check an email and click the confirmation link. Only humans can do that right now. I'm well, not technically, but the bots that do that are really more advanced and it's not nearly as common. Um, so if you're using the mail poet sending service, you have to double opt in. If you're sending it through your own, you do not have to use the double opt in. So again, that's something for your, for you to consider yourself. Um, and then it's just, you can customize the email subject of the confirmation, um, your, your own content here, and it gives you all of the code to be able to, to be able to set it up how you like. And again, um, confirmation page, I made my own, uh, managed subscription and confirmation pages, uh, cause the ones out of the box just kind of fill in some, you know, plain text and in whatever format your website theme has. Um, so I just created another one that just says, you know, I just duplicated the homepage, deleted everything. I really, I really wish I had an ice cream shop because I'm really like, I'm really digging this, this little free layout pack from Cubely. All right. So, <clears throat> excuse me, again, uh, double opt-in is mandatory if you're using the mail poet sending service, but I, I go back and forth on those types of things. Um, and I, I've been on the using it lately. Got some chats here, huh? WPMU so much. They say it works on it, but I, but they don't support it. I'm going to, okay. Uh, Jill says she uses WPMU and they say it works with WPMU, but they don't support it. So she's going to play and see if uh, it works before she buys the app Sumo deal. Cool. Uh, yeah, Jeff said he bought, uh, Jeff Potts bought the app Sumo deal. And if you're new to app Sumo, you get another 10% off. Fantastic. Um, honestly, I think I, I stacked it up. But let's see what what does my what does my account say here? I think I stacked that thing twice. And um, where'd it go? I think. Yeah, I bought two, so all of mine have ten thousand. But I think I'm gonna go stack it up to twenty five thousand. I think I'm gonna buy three more codes because um, I've got some clients who are getting up to close to twenty thousand subscribers. So I just want to make sure that I can offer this and then like quite honestly if if you're a professional you can you can resell that i mean give them 30 percent or 50 percent off of the mail poet price once they hit different subscriber levels all right where were we all right um send with advanced um this is something that i like um i like to know when an email bounces and what email address it bounced to um of course, if you have a ton of subscribers, this is, you're going to be getting a ton of these. Um, but for example, I like this because if somebody enters, you know, um, Jeff Potts at gmail.com, C-O-N, I know that they probably just mistype gmail.com and I can just go in and edit it and keep them on the list rather than them automatically being, you know, forced out by the system. So I like to know when emails bounce, um, but I'm a nerd like that, so... <laughs> do what you like with that. Um, you can, you can, uh, newslet newsletter task scheduler. So, uh, this is, you don't really need to worry about this too much. Um, if you're getting any traffic on your website, just use the visitors, the visits to your traffic visits on your website to trigger it. Um, if you're not getting any visits to your website, uh, just visit your own website. 
I mean, just visit to your website. Just leave it at that. And if you're not getting a lot and you're worried about it, you should be visiting your website at least <coughs> at least once a month anyway. Um, I say that because I recently had a client who doesn't pay me to do anything ongoing with their website. And they're like, Travis, my website's down. And then I started doing some research and I'm like, it's been down for three months. <laughs> And I'm just like, oh my goodness. Um, so visit your own website, regardless of anything else. Um, uh, you can control if you have different admins on your website, what they can see, et cetera. Open and click tracking. Uh, this is something that's on the premium, the advanced stats. But yes, I want to know who's opening my emails, who's clicking on them, when they're clicking on them, all that kind of stuff. I want those advanced statistics. Um, and again, I recently just got back into using this. So I haven't, I don't have um, some, any substantial numbers to show with many of my clients because uh, I haven't moved them over from other systems that are more expensive and more clunky that they're using. I just have one or two that are actually on this under my, my plan right now. Uh, anonymous data, I always share the anonymous data. Um, I know some people are... Uh, paranoid about sharing that data, but anything that can make a plugin better, I'm all for. Uh, protect your forms. So they've got a built-in built CAPTCHA. Um, it's a, um, oh, I just forgot the word for it. It's an invisible CAPTCHA. Uh, you can use the, the, the Google Read CAPTCHA, or you can just, uh, just not use any sort of spam protection and just allow it to go. All right, so that's the advanced. Uh, key activation. If you really want to steal this key, you know, whatever. It'll, it'll, it's already used, so you can't steal it. Nah. All right. So those are the basic basic settings throughout MailPoet, but you don't care about that. You really want to get into the email sending, right? That's why I saved it for last. Now you drink of my Truly with mango juice ice cubes. Don't make fun of me. I see some of you laughing. I don't like Truly, and I had a ton of it, so this works perfectly. All right, um, let's go into the emails. So there are multiple types of emails that you can send. Um, one of them, newsletters. Uh, so a traditional newsletter is kind of your one-off newsletter. Um, you write it, you send it, whenever you want to send out information to your subscribers. I'm gonna click into this one that I've already created here and take a look at it before we talk about new, new email newsletters. Um, and let me move this out of the way. And so, uh, that works. All right, um, the email newsletter builder is great. Um, and I'm just gonna, we're going into one I've already created, a simple newsletter. I am a big fan of simple, mostly text only, email newsletters um, because they're most likely to land in your subscribers inbox um, not in they're more likely to land in the inbox rather than the subscriptions or the spam or the what are some of the other ones that are being used out there now subscriptions um, or not subscriptions I don't know I turn those off because I don't like them I just want to see all my emails because that's why I signed up for promotions them. promotions that's the word I was looking for Promotions, follow-ups, whatever else. Yeah, there's so many different ones and people set them up differently. Um, but I prefer just the basic plain text email. Um, and what's great is that you have all these options over here to build your own text email. And we're gonna go look at some of the templates that are there as well. Um, because I'm not saying you shouldn't do promotional emails with big you know, hero images and discounts and all that kind of stuff and salesy type. Um, wording, but I put a little bit of salesy type wording here. Um, but the more images that are in an email that comes through, the more likely it is to be a promotion. Uh, the more um, the more formatting it is, it's more likely to be a promotion. So um, research shows that lately, actually almost over the past two years, plain text emails uh, from websites are the ones that get delivered the most often. Um, you may have even seen it yourself that you are getting spam emails to your main email box that are just look like regular emails. Well, because they figured that uh, sending a cold, you know, sales outreach, it's a lot more successful if you're not salesy in it, right? So, um, 
But what's great is you've got all of the different um, the all all of the different uh, form fields that you'd expect. Um, so this little mail poet mail poet button here, you can choose first name, last name, email address. Uh, if they're a WordPress user, you can use their display name. Uh, again, if you're really into the vanity, you can show off your number of total subscribers, which is, which is cool. I mean, I I think you could you could probably use that in a um, pretty a pretty cool way in a uh, confirmation email. You know, click here to become our three thousand seven hundred and twenty third subscriber. That might be kind of cool, right? Um, Newsletter subject, you can put the newsletter subject just right back into the newsletter. Uh, post notifications, we'll talk about that. So you can actually uh, automatically, well, within within MailPoet, you can, never mind, we're just talking about regular newsletters right now. We'll get to the other stuff. Today's date, yeah, you know, all this kind of stuff in here is cool. And uh, MailPoet also does require that you have an unsubscribe link. And it views the unsubscribe link different than the edit subscription page link. Um, so, so to keep that in mind whenever you're building your templates here, that you have to have an unsubscribe link. Um, and so what I've done here is just at the bottom, I just said manage subscription or unsubscribe. So they're both, it's still the same thing, still goes to that manage subscription page. But um, if you have that word unsubscribe in your email, it's gonna more likely stay out of that spam box. Um, because the email clients are looking to make sure that you are uh, being ethical in your email sending. And one of them, one of the ways to be ethical is say, hey, yes, I know my website is sending this to you via newsletter. Here's a way for you to get off my newsletter list if you don't want to be on it. Um, so keep that in mind. But there are so many different content options over here too. But I'm going to scroll down into the formatting. So if you want to build your own template from scratch, one column, two, three, four, different splits. Um, you can change the styles here. I don't know why the style's not showing up here. It shows up in the email that's sent. I think this is just the default link um, link color through the WordPress, but whenever it sends, it is my link color that I have here. You can change your different styles for your headings and your text. Um, content background, you know, you wanna put a background color, whatever. Um, and then you can send a, a test email to yourself so you can know exactly what this email looks like. Um, here's where I want to tell you to get your pens out and or whatever, whatever, you're all on computers. Um, and I use a website called Mail Genius. Um, this website is awesome. Uh, if you're sending any sort of newsletters or bulk emails, send a test, send a test to this and let's see um oh crud now i don't remember which one i'm on so i can honestly tell you i have not done it on this one but let's do it let's send a test email they call it a preview oh uh, by the way the first time that you try to send a test preview or a test email if you're sending through the mail poet uh system it'll have a pop-up right here that says you need to add an spf record to your dns to verify that you own the domain and you can send email through the domain so there'll just be a pop-up right here that tells you how to do it if you haven't done it already. Um, again, I'm not gonna get too deep, but I'm not gonna get too deep into that. Uh, all right, so we sent that test email um, and I'm actually gonna visit the website since that's how we're triggering it. And um, I'm not 100% sure <laughs> if it's gonna, uh, you know, if it kind of uh, does it on, you know, a few minute basis or loop, but I don't know. Can we agree that this layout is just super adorable? I mean, there's obviously a lot of graphic design that came behind this. These aren't, these aren't, you know, these aren't, uh, that's one thing that's kind of funny too. That's another conversation though, right? Oh, come on, go away. Wait, wait. I hate when the uh, zoom bar gets in the way of the tab that you're trying to share. All right, so let's see if it came through yet. All right, so. Mail Genius score, 85 out of 100. That's not too bad, um, but it's not fantastic. Um, so that is part of the downside of, of sending an email, only verifying um, the SPF. And I'm, oh, I could talk about email deliverability all day, so I'm gonna try not to. Um, but what I love about this website is it tells you straight up, and it's very, very good about how you can improve improve your email to make it arrive in 
uh, inboxes to the main tab in an inbox more more um, frequently. Um, I'm, again, I'm not going to go through all of this, but DMARC is it's getting a huge fail for DMARC. Um, that basically uh, is, is some DNS that verifies that the email is actually coming from an authorized email sender. Um, some broken links. Uh oh, what I do here? I got some broken links. Oh, yep. I created a fake coupon code. Uh, that's true. See, look, it caught that. I created a fake coupon code, and that coupon page does not exist on the website. So that's pretty cool. Um, HTML body best practices. So these are kind of things that maybe we have. Oh, the uh, the link, the URL is pretty long, as we kind of see, because it's got it's being tracked by MailPoet. It's got the mail MailPoet tracking information there. This that's not a huge issue. Spammy language, no spammy language. That's great. Uh, linked linked images. Nah, they don't like linked images. So uh, keep that in mind for those of you like me who like to use those uh, HTML email signatures, you know, that have, that have the links to all your social media. Think about that as well. Uh, and DKIM and DMARC and SPF, they all go hand in hand. Um, they all go hand in hand to verifying that, that, you, that the email is coming from an authorized sender by the domain. And the fact that um, with DMARC that anybody who receives spam can report the spam properly to somebody who's managing the website. Um, so these are, you know, these are nice little notes um, and things that I would definitely set up more in depth if I wasn't just setting this up for a quick presentation. Um, but mail, mailgenius.com, I recommend it 100% before I send any bulk email, I run it through here and make as many of these updates as possible. Um, I usually shoot for, um, for 92 or better, and DMARC and DKIM and SPF are things that I am um, animate about, <laughs> making sure they work. All right, so, okay, go away, Zoom bar. I wanna click on my tabs up there. Now it's gone, and now, okay, so let's go back to, this one can go away, that one can go away. There we go, okay. So, um, I, I, oh, sorry. Yeah, what I did there is I clicked next to go on to the next step, and we've got. Again, you can you can change your your subject line here if you like. I'm pointing at it as if I'm giving this presentation here in person. Sorry. Um, uh, select what list you want to send it to. You can select more multiple lists that you want it to go to. Again, you can change the name who it comes from. Um, if you haven't. If you haven't uh, verified the email address, don't change the email address. So if you haven't verified the email address with MailPoet, let me uh, restate that. And um, you can track it in uh, Google Analytics by entering a, a campaign name. You can read some more about that here. That's beyond the scope of this intro presentation. Um, so you can save it and close, or you can send it now. Boop, I'm not gonna do that though. Um, all right, so let me move this thing out of the way again. Now let's go back to emails. I talk about some more of the fun stuff. So that's just your basic email newsletter. Uh, that's one of the two things that I try to set all of my clients up with, just a quick, easy way that they can reach out to all of their subscribers at once. Um, and then the next thing that I always set up for all of my clients is a new post notification. Um, so this way, uh, all of my clients can send out newsletters and it will also be posted on their blog. So anytime there's a new blog post, it can automatically send out a news, an email to the subscribers. Um, and let's just click through this real quick. I'm not gonna get super in depth, um, but you can set it so it sends, sends out new posts every day, every week, immediately as they happen. Um, if, you're, if you write a lot of blog posts, maybe once a day is good, uh, if you, or maybe once a week. If uh, you don't write a lot, immediately is probably good. Um, so I'm just going to say immediately, but you know, let's look at the other options. So once a day, you can choose your time, um, and that's going to be the time localized to your WordPress website installation. Um, weekly, again, monthly on whatever day, every first Monday, you know. Um, but then again, 
as we get through here, you'll see that you can categorize it. So maybe you want to send out, um, you know, new blog posts, you know, once a week, but you want to send out your new event or your new specials as soon as they come out. So you got lots of different options here. Um, and we've got lots of different pre-built post notification email templates. Um, I'll just click through some of these other ones while we're here. Newsletter. Um, of course, on the premium version, you have way more options than on the free version. Um, but then again, you can create your own, um, your own layouts and save them as templates as well, which is awesome. Um, and some of them, I mean, not some of them, you know, most of them look pretty good out of the box, you know, making a couple of little changes and saving it as your own. Welcome emails. So as soon as somebody signs up for your list, post notifications, what we're talking here, simple text. This is where we started before. Um, again, I just, I think I chose one of these and I didn't add a logo and removed everything else. Recently sent, I haven't sent any, but you can just go create one of those as a template as well. Import it. Boop. I don't know if you're working with friends or you created an awesome one for one client's website or one of your own properties. Um, but post notification, I'm just going to click in here real quick. Uh, let me find one that's, yeah, let's go with this one. No, I didn't want to preview it. I want to select it. All right. All right. So from in here, let's move this out of the way. Fantastic. So we've got some more little uh, short codes that we can use in here um, for to newsletter total. So this is the number of posts. I don't know why anybody would use that. I don't know. So can anybody think of a reason why you would just be like, hey, there are three blog posts in here. Like that's boring. I don't know. Um, this line here I think is, is an underused line and I'm actually was very happy that MailPoet included it because I, I feel like a lot of free newsletters don't have this line. So this is the text that'll appear in the subscriber's inbox beside the subject, but before they open it. So um, I, I like to kind of relate it to like the meta description in search results. You know, you see it before you go into it and it doesn't always exactly say what's inside. Um, but here we go. You can view it in the browser. So you can view the HTML version of it, of the website or of the email. And again, we've got all kinds of we got all these same links that we've seen here before. But where this one gets powerful is uh, top stories, no content to display because this the website doesn't have any content, but it'll actually pull in the previews of your content right there. Um, but it's, you know, show me the last three posts and you can choose your categories and your tags here too. So, so you can say, hey, you know, I only want to send out, for example, I'm going to use my old reference of my Kansas City Royals blog. I could be like, yeah, I only want to send out uh, Northwest Arkansas Naturals, the double A team for the Royals, by the way. I'm really missing baseball. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so you could send that out or certain players, for example, um, you know, for I guess the NFL draft was just, you know, this weekend. Uh, you know, Chiefs, anything that's tagged with the NFL draft, you know, that would be something that's good to send out on Monday after the draft, right? If you want to send out anything that's tagged with the draft shortly after the draft. Display options. Um, if you've done anything with displaying blog posts on your website, this is very similar here. Um, in fact, you got a little bit more control. Title only, full posts, uh, how you want it aligned. Do you want to link, link the titles, show the author? categories, read more, is it a button, is it a link? You can design your own buttons, um, sort newest to oldest, select the divider you want. Um, if you're brand new to this, I would say don't get, don't get too caught up. Send a couple based on a template that's kind of already there and then make your changes. Um, I don't know what this one is, this one looks kind of cool. Let's toss that one in there, I haven't used this one yet. Of course there's nothing, right? Automatic, oh, that's the same thing. What? Pfft. Go away. Well, it really wants to make sure you want to get rid of it, doesn't it? Okay. Um, as you can see, I mean, the content options are great with the posts. This, ah, uh, there we go. That's the one I wanted to see. This is the one I don't use very often. It's where you, it doesn't like, the, there we go, uh, where you can, put in a single post. So this would be good if you're creating a newsletter and you just want to send a single post. Um, or if you're sending a, if you're sending, you know, uh, your new posts, but then you're like, Hey, this is the most popular post that we've ever had in a single category. 
and it's evergreen, still relevant, might as well drop that one in there too. Um, I'm a big green, big believer in creating content that can be reused forever, just as long as it's updated. Um, similar similar style settings, but I'm just going to click through this because right here is really what we what we're looking at the uh, newest blog posts. And since I, I didn't even think to create a couple of blog posts, I'm an idiot. So let's click next. And again, you can change your subject, you can change your frequency in case you messed it up, change your list, etc. Um, so that, like I said, those are the two that I set up for every single new client is, is making sure, even whether I'm using MailPoint or not, that, hey, if you're going to blog, let's make sure your subscribers can get it or are getting it so you don't have to go through an extra step. And then two, if you want to just send that one-off newsletter email to everybody, you can do that. Um, let's go back to the emails and take a look real quick at... Um, uh, I didn't want to do that one. That was just a... Of course, right. All right. Uh, welcome emails. I'm just going to move that one to trash and let's start over. Um, so the welcome emails, this is another fun one that I highly, highly recommend. Um, I highly recommend that you, when somebody signs up to a list, uh, make your call to action for them to sign up to that list enticing and give them a lot of stuff whenever they sign up. Uh, whatever it may be, um, obviously if you're sending out weekly newsletters and your new blog posts, that's great, but this is so much more powerful on the welcome, welcome emails. So, uh, when a new user, when a new user is registered on your site or when somebody's added to a list, we're just going to go with the list and we're going to start this one actually immediately. And now what's great with this, uh, let's just select one here real quick. We're just gonna click through this because this isn't this is just the same as the other ones. Same as the same as the others. You can say, oh, here we go. Yep, yep, same as the others. We can change all of that. Um, and now I'm gonna hit activate on here. So anytime somebody joins the list, they're gonna get this email. Now now let's add another one. Move it out of the way. Now, what you can do is after somebody subscribes to the list, the same list, now we can send another email to them two days later. So you've they've signed up to the list, you've sent them a valuable content, and now you can send them a follow-up with more valuable content. This is what's referred to as a drip drip email series or drip sequence. So um, that's what's really great about this that, that I, I don't think that they, they put enough weight on it that you can create all of these emails and that end up creating the series. Um, and somebody can, again, if they go to that managed subscription page, they can unsubscribe from whatever list which will take them out of the series. We got some chats here, where we got chats. Promote, oh yeah, there we go. Can you attach files like a PDF? Um, I would say don't, I don't know. I don't know if we can attach it, um, but I don't think so with MailPoet, but you can always upload it to your own website and then link it. Um, so again, MailPoet is more of the traditional email newsletter type, type um, platform rather, rather than a marketing automation um, or um, you know, sales funnel funnel type. But so the, the welcome email, the series is something that I'm hugely a proponent of as well. Um, because you can have somebody, for example, some of the primary service offerings that I offer are uh, WordPress website development, search engine optimization, uh, email marketing. So if somebody signs up for specifically an email marketing list, I can send them a series of, um, you know, like, seven emails. One comes as soon as they sign up. One comes a couple days later. The last one comes maybe, you know, uh, maybe three weeks later and offering various different levels of, of content, different types of content, and then also um, different types of pushing to, hey, sign up for my class that I have or buy my, you know, buy my book, whatever it may be. Uh, so these email drip, series are super powerful and 
flat out built in. It's just that little bit of nuance whenever you're setting it up because it doesn't show you right away that, hey, this is, this is an email drip series because you can't see them in that linear order. Um, maybe they'll add that feature in the future to where it just looks like a string and you can tell that they're one after the other. Um, and then let's get into uh, the last type of email, which is the WooCommerce emails. And these are really freaking cool. If you sell anything using WooCommerce on your website, you know that the WooCommerce default emails look like garbage. Uh, and they're not super simple to, to style. So MailPoet helps you take care of all of that. Um, and I don't have WooCommerce installed here for the demo, but uh, abandoned cart, abandoned shopping cart, you've all seen that. If you use Amazon, you've seen that. You put something in your shopping cart, you didn't buy it. A little bit later, they'll say, hey, you forgot something. Um, if you're checking out that AppSumo link that I sent you and you put something in your cart and then go away, in a couple hours, you'll get an email being like, do you have abandonment issues? <laughs> because you forgot to make the purchase after you put it in your cart. Um, and you can also, uh, you can also down here in the purchase in this category, this is, allows you to start segmenting your users as well. So you're like, hey, you know what? I sell clothes. Um, people who are interested in shoes are probably interested in socks or more likely to be interested in socks, right? Than maybe rings or I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not very fashionable. Great, great t-shirt, great t-shirt with a word on it. That's about it. For but anyway, so then you can start segmenting your users um, just out of the box with WooCommerce. Uh, after somebody, the first person, after they've made their first purchase, you want to send them a different email potentially. Um, for each one of your products, for an individual product, you can send them follow-up emails, uh, you know, to get them to leave that review on your website, for example. Um, but if you use WooCommerce, this is, fan this is a fantastic integration and it is super deep. Uh, I was playing around with it actually on an active website. I didn't have time to bring it in just for a demo. Um, and that active website is not completely set up. So I didn't want to use it for this. Uh, ah, okay. Well, here's some opt-in forms. Um, it in integrates uh, with a lot of the popular forms plugins for free. Um, page builders via plugin or short code, again, a lot of them. Um, premium themes and theme builders. Um, and also, I should mention that if anybody uses um, Wishlist Member, which is a membership management plugin, is so you can have gated content, drip emails for um, subscriptions for a membership website. That's not listed on here, but they actually do integrate with that as well to send all your emails through, through um, that platform. Um, somebody else was telling me that the, who was it? Oh, Carissa was telling me, Carissa Skirma, who's also an organizer of WordPress KC, was telling me today that it, um, they're, ro I think, rolling out an integration with LearnDash or some other learning management platforms, you know, so where you can create your courses and have people take quizzes and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, so, it, it seems like MailPoet is getting a lot of love lately, and I'm very glad that I decided to check it out again because I've been very impressed with, with their ease of use and ease of setup. Um, and I, I, like I said, I've started, started pushing my clients, newer clients, this way uh, right out of the box because it is cheaper at 1,000 members for them. Um, they can set it up quickly themselves, or I can create the, the you know, some default based themes for them or templates to use for their newsletters. You know, and if you're a professional, that's some, some extra bucks, you know, some extra bucks in your pocket and on, on the project by just selling that. Uh, you can also then, of course, add on any sort of email marketing services or just basic, I'm sorry, not even email marketing, but basic newsletter services um, to add a couple dollars. But I highly recommend MailPoet, um, especially where it's at. And the free version is fantastic, but that AppSumo deal right now, 5,000 for 5,000 subscribers on an unlimited number of websites. 
I mean, I don't, I don't know how you can beat that. That pricing for that level right now is $46 a monthly, $55 a month for 5,000 subscribers with all of those unlimited. So if nothing else, get one of those. You'll, you'll, you'll thank me later. It may, you may not use it for a couple of years, but it's always, it's going to be valuable forever. So, all right. Thank you all very much. Um, I'm going to unmute this. And if anybody has any questions, let's unmute everybody. Let's stop sharing the screen. And um, I don't know how to unmute everybody at the same time, but if you have a question, unmute yourself and let's hear the questions. Somebody's gonna have one question. I guess I have a question. Hey, all right, we got a question. Our first question coming all the way from the greater Metro Kansas City area. Tommy. Harley's, Harley's Summit. <laughs> um, we've been doing a lot of live streaming at church and we really not tracking who, who's watching. Uh, good male poet be used in that uh, area? Uh, somewhat. So um, I would say that, so if people already know, if people are already knowing how they're, if people already know how to find your live stream, then, I mean, you may get some bump by sending them that email and having them click on that link, um, but it wouldn't hurt. So if you're sending that email that says, hey, here's our live stream link um, or the replay of, for example, I mean, if you're storing that on YouTube or wherever else it may be, um, and then sending out, you know, the invitation with that live stream link and then later saying, hey, here's the location um, or here's where that, that um, service is if you want to rewatch it or if you missed it, then you can definitely track it that way. You'll definitely have those statistics and you'll see who will who will click it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, LaDonna asked, um, can you talk about the analytics? Does MailPoet have its own or does it work with Google Analytics? If you talked about that, sorry, I missed it. So both. The answer is both. Um, inside MailPoet, it's got, let's go. Again, I don't have, uh, this is just a demo site, so it doesn't have a lot of data on it, but let's actually, I'm sure I can find some examples on there. Uh, so you have to be on the premium version, which is included in the mail, in the AppSumo deal, the statistics. Actually, I think they've got some screenshots here. In the AppSumo deal, um, again, I shared that link in the chat. And all right, so, it does have um, some, some basic statistics here or data that's gonna show you. Uh, for each individual newsletter and email that you send, you'll see, you'll see how many are delivered out of how many that were attempted, open, click, percent, open, percent, click, percent, uh, et cetera. And it kind of gives their own little rankings of is that good, is that excellent. Um, of course, every single uh, industry, every single website is going to be different. Um, you know, I mean, if you're selling yachts, you know, you probably got a pretty small list of people who are really interested in yachts. So you may have, you know, a very high open and click percentage. Um, actually, during the stay at home order, uh, emails have been open on a much, much higher percentage. Um, a lot of the big, big time marketing companies are reporting between 15 to 20% increases on their open percentage on emails that are sent uh, because people all of a sudden have more time. I don't know. I just, I just look at my emails while I drive. No, just kidding. I'm just kidding. Right. Um, and then also in each individual um, subscriber, you can see, uh, you can, you can click into them and you can see whenever they subscribe, unsubscribe, all of that kind of stuff as well. And I think you can see some more statistics, but let's take a look at the, um, MailPoet website because I think they actually go over this a little more, but it is um, the, the, the data is in the premium version. So, um, and it's included in the AppSumo deal. Um, so just with the thousand subscribers, you're not going to get that analytics. Um, so uh, it's just like a premium version. 
So here's some just like some at a glance. Um, when you go into that individual newsletter that you sent, you'll, you can see exactly where people are clicking within that newsletter uh, or that email. And then again, we talked about segmentation a little bit. Um, but yes, you can inside the, the individual newsletter, and I'm going to click back in and take a look at one of them real quick, emails. If we remember at the, at the end of this here, it's got, <clears throat> you, can enter, you can enter your Google Analy Analytics campaign ID um, and it will tag it so then you can actually get that data inside Google Analytics as well. Is that, is that a, does that answer? I think so. And who else has got a question for me? Um, I, this is Janet. I have a question for you. I guess I could turn on my light so you could actually see me. Ah, I'm sitting in my office and it's getting darker and darker. Hey, that's all it's right. I my am... shadow here. Uh, oh. So I have a couple of questions. Uh, yeah. Number one, um, I am um, actually going to be hosting a SCORE webinar tomorrow. Yeah. Um, where our speaker is going to be talking about e-commerce and I know WooCommerce will probably come up with that. So can anybody have this male poet deal and how long is it running for? That's my first question. Yes, anybody can have it. Uh, I mean, anybody can get the, the male poet deal. Um, and so AppSumo, um, their deals run, I think, total total for like two or th three months. I'm not 100% sure when this one came on, um, but I I'm pretty sure it's not ending. They usually let you know when there's like three or four days left on AppSumo, um, kind of over on the AppSumo page in the like top right where it says buy now. If it's getting close to ending, it's got like a countdown timer. And I don't remember how far they started out, but. And so um, it's a $49 for a lifetime instead of the 55 a month is like that for real? Yes. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so it's 40, yeah, $49 for. One time, um, one time payment. One time payment. Wow. 5,000 subscribers on an unlimited number of websites. So, and I like the way that you said, even if you don't think you need it right now, you yes. might want to just buy it for like insurance for a future reference. Cause like we use MailChimp for our personal uh, yep. business email and we're, you know, we've been using it for a number of years. We're quite happy with it, but that doesn't mean that it might not change or it might, you know, like, cause we use it for, you know, the automation, we use it for the landing pages. So, you know, as you said, as um, as male poet develops, there might be better or more features in it that might make us want us to have it in the future. Yeah, and I, I think again, I think did I just answer my own question? I think so. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. The only thing is, like the AppSumo deals, they expire. I mean, you know, they go away. They're not they're not always on AppSumo forever. But once you buy it you have 60 days to activate the deal. Okay. Um, and then after you buy it, you have 60 days to actually test it out. And if you don't like it, it's a no questions asked refund too. Okay, okay, good. Oh. All right, so I will uh, mention it tomorrow and then I'll also look it into it for my partner and I. Cool. And if you wanna share, if you wanna share my, uh, my link that I dropped in there, then I get and I will do that. I'm happy to, to use your affiliate link. Absolutely. It's, we'll do so. It's technically a referral link. So I just oh, get AppSumo. A, a referral link. Absolutely. I love that. So I get more. I'm a junkie. I'm an AppSumo junkie. Like literally, I, I go on there every day. I watch. So AppSumo is fantastic because they lay it out for you. And then they do a light. They make a little short video on how it works. And then they have a live webinar. Uh, later on that is a deep dive in how it works with the software developers. Now, not every, not every software that's on there is as mature as MailPoet because MailPoet's been around for a long time. Um, so some of, the, some of the softwares are like, hey, this is what the software is going to do eventually. It doesn't do it now. Um, I, I can't say I've ever been quote unquote burned by any deals I've gotten off AppSumo. And I've only purchased one life. There are a handful of websites that offer these. AppSumo is the highest quality. 
It was founded by uh, Noah Kagan, who was one of the first uh, employees at Facebook. So. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. And so I've never been burned by a deal. There, there have been a couple that I said, you know what, uh, this just isn't ready yet. And then I've sat it on the shelf for shelf, shelfware is what uh, people who are junkies like me call it. <laughs> and then come back like years later and I'm like, oh my goodness, this, this software is amazing now. I can't believe that I got this for 50 bucks. And now like their monthly cost is like sometimes like $500 a month. Sure, so, sure. Okay, great. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else have a question? Comment? Concern? Bitches? Gripes? Moans? <laughs> We'd love to bitch. And they're always welcome. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, I hope you got some value out of this tonight.